Thanks for staying here on News Desk. But let's return to our earlier story where a joint military and police task force has arrested 22 individuals in the Upper West region for engaging in illegal mining equipment used in detecting and refining gold, shotguns, and electric generators were retrieved from those arrested. Uh, Rafiq Salam, uh, our colleague in the Upper West region, joins us on phone now with a lot more. So, Rafiq, uh, tell us much more about these arrests. Um, you know, uh, uh, I earlier reported that there were 22 uh, people, uh, suspected illegal manners, mm. that were arrested. But the latest is that nine uh, other people have been arrested at different locations. You know, there are about four communities in this enclave uh, located in the eastern corridor of the World West District. We have the communities like Puli, Punyantanga, Tanangana, and then also Dweleyiri. And so the first operation that was done by the Joint Military and Police had 22 people arrested. And then also several valuable assets also taken to them. They have taken their refinery, they have taken their metal, uh, their gold detectors, motorbikes, and also shotguns were also retrieved during the exercise. And so the following, yeah, that was yesterday, and then they went and arrested nine other people at uh, Puyantanga. And so that is the situation. But let me also tell you that, mm. uh, this issue of uh, the illegal guarantees came to the fore, I think, about two weeks ago uh, when they came, uh, when they heard uh, that uh, they have discovered gold around that particular area. And so for two weeks, you, you wouldn't believe it, over 1,500 people relocated to the site and started the game for the gold. Rafik, many thanks for that update. And that was uh, Upper West. Regional correspondent Rafiq Salam bringing us an update on uh, that situation there. Those illegal miners who have been arrested by the police. To, uh, well, a story I really don't want to talk about, but I really have to talk about. It has to do with the coach of uh, Ghana Premier League side, Kumasi Asante Kotoko. David Duncan, who has been sacked by the club following a series of poor runs in the local league. The Porcupine Warriors registered their third away defeat on Sunday after a 1 0 loss against the uh, Diana Stars at Doma. It's unclear what more accounted for his sack, but Joy Sports Benedito also is joining me now in studio with more details in uh, this development story. So, Benedict, many thanks for joining us. Pleasure, pleasure. Well, I'm not too happy I'm talking about <laughs> this, but uh, you know what? But first, a uh, point of correction. Okay. Uh, Kotoko, according to them, did not sack Duncan. He's okay. still the coach of the team. They've only asked him to, to step, step aside, aside until further notice with immediate effect. So now okay. what's happening is that uh, Michael... Uh, oh, okay, so, so uh, now I want you to explain to us what's mm. the difference between sacking the person and, and asking aside. him to step aside. Exactly. That has also been my point uh, that this morning I was trying to get explanation to that because if you told me that the person should step aside until further notice it's probably like just telling the person to go but wait the thing is Kotoko knows very well that if they are to sack Duncan now they would have to pay him off and I'm sure and I know that yes package. and I know that they are not in a position to do that so probably the best thing they can do is that okay just step aside uh, if you are frustrated and you're, you attend in your resignation letter, then you go without them paying you anything. So what they are trying to say now is that you step aside, we'll still pay you your monthly salary, but you're not going to work with the team. So it's an indirect way of sacking him. Sacking the person. And that's what they've always been doing. Because I remember very well the last time Didi Dramani, uh, he was manager of the team, they did something like that to him as well. They asked him to step aside until further notice. Didi Dramani went and he never came back. So obviously this means that for us, They've sacked him, but according to Kotoko and the statement they brought out, they say they've asked him to step aside. And let, let's let's look at uh, David Duncan mm. and how he's fared over the period. Whether or not it's even fair to give him the axe at this time? You know what? This would have come probably if they had not won their game against Tazakes because prior to that game, there were a lot of talks about uh, David Duncan not doing well, especially this season. And, you know, you will understand every Kotoko fan and every sports analyst who sits on radio and TV to talk about whether Duncan should be in charge or should be, you know, fired. He's a very, you know, uh, good friend of mine. But what happened was, going into the season, when Duncan took over last season, he took over from Didi Dramani. Didi Dramani, I think, had played just seven games or so, and results were not coming. Remember, Didi Dramani had won uh, two league yeah. titles with yeah. them before Duncan came in. And so when Duncan came and things were not really going well, at some point last season, Kotoko even uh, were struggling to escape relegation. But, you know, the talk was that, well, Duncan came in, uh, it wasn't his players. These are new players, so we should just give, give him the, time. Let's give him time. So he managed to finish the season. Now the second season, which is uh, the season is in now, 
He signed as many as 14 players, uh, if that's right. And uh, in all those players, he was so, so instrumental in signing the players. Now, you get your players enough time to do preseason. You know the league also delayed. Mm -hmm. They went away to play some friendly matches in Libya. And pre in preseason, Kotoko were phenomenal. They did very well. They won four trophies, won the G6. They won, uh, they, I think, I could see their cup and some other trophies as well. So in all these and how well they performed, and I always say that in preseason, they did 95% of the job that they were supposed to do. And obviously, every Kotoko fan would expect them to do very well in the league. Now, so here so comes, happened? we start the Ghana Premier League, and uh, after March the 6th, Kotoko are bottom of the league table. Obviously, I mean, people will start asking questions. And if they start asking questions, if, if a team is winning, we give credit to the coach. And if they are losing, we must bear the blame. It's the coach. So that explains why, I mean, probably maybe this time they've asked him to leave the club. Oh, okay, so uh, who, who is replacing him? That's well, well uh, according to the statement they, they sent uh, this morning, they said uh, Duncan should step aside for assistant coach Michael Osei. Uh, because they've not sacked him, they've said uh, he should step aside until further notice. So Michael Osei, who is the assistant coach, will be in charge. Uh, until if probably maybe they feel that Duncan should come back and take the club, but we all know that's not going to happen. Okay, so Michael Osei coming in as David Duncan bows out, mm. uh, what is really likely to change? You know, Michael Osei, I remember very well the last time uh, he's an assistant coach, but he, he has had the opportunity to win two trophies with the team. An amazing story that most of us, we don't talk about. I remember when Didi Dramani was there, he had an engagement uh, with the Black Stars prior to the World Cup. He had to fly to the U.S. Uh, for some scouting job for the Black Stars. Michael Osei played in the FA Cup game, I think it was against Media Madi across the and he won it without the head coach. And in this Duncan era, Duncan, the J6 tournament, Duncan took a different team to Libya. Michael Osei played in the finals of the G6 tournament and he won it as well. So, I mean, they believe that uh, Michael Osei, having been at the club under Didi Dramani and also Duncan, probably he's learned a lot and that, you know, he can take them through uh, the rest of the season. But uh, I, I've, I've been hearing that uh, there is a white man in town <laughs> in Kumasi, so probably maybe he will take charge Wait, of the th team. There's a white man in town. Yes, uh, so <laughs> Michael Osei is going to be a caretaker coach for mm, now. Yes, yes, yeah, something like that, caretaker coach. But I hear there is a white man in town. Is he also from Japan? No, this one is not from Japan. <laughs> no, this one no, I hear is from no. I hear he's from Germany and from Germany. Yeah, he's from Germany. Former uh, coach of Ivory uh, Cameroon. I hear he's in town to take over Kotoko. That's what I hear. But wow. you know, possible. <laughs> So uh, if, if you're a Kotoko fan, then... Uh, I, I am yeah. a Kotoko fan, and I must oh, say, I've, I've not been too enthused about quite a number mm. of things. And it, it, not, it, it's not limited to just Kumasi and mm. Kotoko. In fact, the local league as a whole, I've not really, over the past two years or so, I've not really... No, but I think this time, been, things have changed. You see it, how... It appears yeah, things are... Things have changed. The train, hard to put yesterday at the Accra Stadium, what's amazing. Almost 85% of, you know, the... Uh, stadium was filled to capacity. Mm. We didn't even get that, that attendance when the Black Stars played mm. against Mozambique. And you look at how now Hearts of Oak fans are patronizing their game. It's awesome. It's not just about Accra Stadium. You go to Tichiman, it's the mm. same. In Doma, Idiana, it's the same. Almost all the venues. Even in Dewu, where Dreams FC, Theater <laughs> of Dreams, you get lots of people going. And mm. the quality of play has been there for all, all of us to see. Yes. We, we are seeing wonderful goals scored this season. This is where we want the Premier League to go. And you know what? Even on Twitter, on normal days when Manchester United, Everton are playing, or even Manchester United City are playing, Ghana Premier League is trending, trending on Twitter. Yeah, yesterday I saw, I saw yeah. it was really trending. You see, uh, uh, so sp speaking of uh, a crowd of folk, they, they uh, lost yesterday. Yes, they their lost. Their first defeat of the season, right? <laughs> their first defeat uh, of the season. Wow, starts again. Yes, but yesterday, uh, Hearts going into that game, there were allegations that uh, the referee, you know, was going to favor uh, uh, Wow Stars. Did that happen? Well, I, I wasn't at the studio. <laughs> okay. I, I, I listened to commentary. Okay. So George will be in a better, a better position to okay. tell us that. George will be here shortly. Yeah, George will be here. So the, you, you ask George right. about that. Okay. But it is many thanks for Pleasure. that particular always, update. Always so a now the on, clarification yeah. you are giving us is that, well, the club officially says they have not sacked Coach no, Duncan. Yeah, but they've asked, they just asked him to step aside. Exactly. But over the years, that mm. has been the trend. Of you are asked to step aside then that, and that then that you tender gone. your resignation. Yeah. Someone else comes to take over. Exactly. Okay. And for now, the assistant coach, Michael Osei, Michael Osei yeah, we'll is taking over. Yeah. But then, your sources suggest that well, yeah. there's a German in town yeah. ready to take over Kumasi yeah. Asante. Absolutely. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. But uh, <laughs> many thanks for your time. And that was Benedict also bringing us a lot more on, uh, should I say, the sack or asking to step aside of uh, the Kumasi Asante Kotoko coach. Uh, coach Duncan, you're told, He's now no longer 
in charge of affairs at the Kumasi based Bacteria. sports yeah, club. Sorry, and then sorry, sorry, sorry. Before I take leave of you, right. you know, Duncan, just some few minutes ago, granted an interview with uh, one local station here in Accra, and he says he's not going in anywhere. He's not going anywhere? Yeah, he says in his contract, there is nothing like step aside. In a contract he signed with Kotoko, so as far as he is concerned, he's still the coach. He's still the coach. So, so it's either you are sacking me sack him outright, yes. you know, I'm, I'm so still there. There is nothing like step aside in his contract, so he's not going anywhere. Ah, mm. interesting. We we'll see yeah. how this plays so out. This week, uh, the, coming, the coming weeks. Absolutely. It's going absolutely. to be really interesting. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Benedict was bringing us a lot more on that particular one, and uh, quite an interesting twist he just added. They will keep our eyes on that and trust Joy Sports to bring you the very latest when it comes to some of these things. You're watching News Desk here on the Joy News Channel. Time now for us to break for business with Emmanuel Abadjiyafi. Stay with us.